Hi, I'm Jared Blasdell, Group Training Director at Lion Technology. And I'm Flip DeRay, an instructor here at Lion Technology. Thank you for joining us here for part two of the DOT Hazmat Autocomplete Challenge. What is hazmat shipping? What is hazmat shipping? So, here we go. First question. What is? What is required on hazmat shipping papers? Okay. So, when it comes to the Department of Transportation, any document that you're generating for shipping can be your shipping papers. Uh, it can be an invoice. It can be a bill of lading. As long as it has five things. Uh, three bits of data and two other things. The three bits of data are uh, a basic description of the hazardous material, the total amount that you're shipping, the total total, and the number and type of packages. Those three bits of data need to be on your document for it to count as your shipping paper. Also, you are required to have a signature of someone who has been DOT trained that everything is in fine working order and ready for shipment, and you need to have an emergency contact phone number on there. So someplace a first responder can call for more advice. So all of you out there that have been in one of Flip's courses, you're ready to sign those papers. What is... Another long question, Flip. Here we go. What is the proper sequence for a hazmat shipping description? Okay. So it ties the in the last question. Yeah, that really does. The hazmat shipping description or the basic description is required on your shipping paper, uh, and that consists of what we call the I-SHIP information. Uh, I stands for the ID number. So if there's a UN or an NA number associated with your material, and there's going to be, that goes first, followed by the proper shipping name. So that's the S in I-SHIP is shipping name, followed by H, which is the hazard class. Okay, so the I ship, ISH, we have ID number, shipping name, hazard class. If there's a subsidiary risk, that's gonna go in parentheses. And then last, if, you, if your material has one, is gonna be the packing group. That second I is for implied, because it's just implied. I ship is the, is the order for your basic description. Perfect, we love acronyms around here, and that's just we another do. one for people to follow. <laughs> you guys are all familiar with those. Our next question, what is the hazmat shipping table? Ah, well the table, the 172-101 table, is a list of materials that are shipped along with uh, the proper shipping names of materials. When you go to ship a material, you can't always call it what you call it around your facility. You may have to call it by a specific name. That name's gonna be tied to a number and that's gonna be tied to first responder information, right? And we want everyone to be well informed. So that table has over 3,000 entries of materials that are shipped and proper shipping names for those materials. Great. Another one, long one we've got, why is, ooh, mascara considered hazmat for shipping? That's an oddly uh, specific question. That is it's not, not oddly specific question. Cosmetics, but mascara, but I, mascara? But I have a, a sort of general answer uh, and a specific answer. One, it's a flammable solid. That's why it's considered uh, a hazmat for shipping. But two, it really brings home the point that hazardous materials aren't necessarily bad materials. They're things we need for our way of life, for industry, and they can be something as uh, innocuous as mascara. But if you're shipping a drum of it, it is a flammable solid, and therefore we need it to regulate it and handle it in a thoughtful manner. There you go. Everybody, whoever was typing in mascara, you have your answer. <laughs> when is hazmat considered bulk? Hmm, okay. Your hazardous materials that are shipped in bulk, uh, for example, liquids, if your single package of hazardous material is larger than 119 gallons, that's considered a bulk package. And that's important because if you're shipping a bulk package, you're gonna have one set of regulations and rules for packaging and shipping it. And if it's a non-bulk package, you're gonna have a different set of rules. So it's important to know what size package you are shipping. But for liquids, it starts at 119 gallons and goes up. Uh, solids and gases have a similar but slightly different standard that you'd want to check out. Well, that's going to do it, Flip. Alrighty. That is our final question for today's challenge. So share this video with your colleagues so they too can skip out on using the search engine. Flip and all of our Lion Hazmat and Hazardous Waste instructors are coming to a city near you soon. So visit us at lion.com for a full listing of available workshops, webinars, and online courses. Thanks. <laughs>